guys, even being as customs here. Today I'm going to start debugging the issues going on with my 89 Corvette. See why it's uh, having a hard time starting and uh, it also tends to bog down and stall when I hit the gas pedal. My suspicion is either the fuel pump, but more likely the fuel injectors on it. So I'm going to show how to test that and uh, see if we can debug what the actual problem is here. So while my wife was driving the car home the other night, the car died on her. Uh, she went again in the left lane, put her foot down, and the thing just pretty much stalled out. Uh, after getting it towed home, I tried to start it again. The engine was warm, and I haven't touched it since. So with the engine cold, it's the right time to be testing the fuel injectors here on it. Uh, what we're going to do is do the stock GM Multitex. This is an 89 Corvette. We're going to be looking for uh, 16 to 17 ohms on each uh, injector here. All we do is we come in on an injector, you push up the thumb tab here on the bottom, and then you just pull the clip up. It's hard to do with one hand. There it goes. With that clip up, you can see the two exposed prongs in there inside of it. What we're going to do is we're going to put a multi-tech voltmeter on there on an ohm setting and look for the resistance on each injector. So here's my multimeter. We're going to set it to the, where my thumb is there, the 200 ohm setting at the bottom here. All right, like that. Now, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this on camera because I only have one hand and you need to hold each one separate to it and I want to get an accurate reading. But all I'm literally going to do is take one prong of each side and put it onto one clip of the injector. It does not matter which red or black prong probe you put on which pin of the injector. Just put one on each one, wait for the reading to stabilize on the multimeter, and then take your reading. So I'm gonna do that now for this side of the engine. So I've done the first two injectors here, and they both read out fine. One was 16.2, this one was 16.6 ohms. But I wanna show a common problem here. When I took this clip off, you can see here how the spring is kind of bound up. It didn't return back to its position and it came out of the track. And with a little finesse, see how it just clipped back in? That's how it needs to be to go back on. Make sure your clip, the spring here, is returned back to the normal position. Otherwise, if you put it on, it will fall and leave it. It might fall off while you're driving, which is equally as bad, so you don't want. And to put it back on, you just put it on like that, push down, and you'll hear it click. Perfect. I'm now going to continue on with the next two and see what the readings are there. All right, so here's the readings. Here's the firewall of the car. So the passenger side banks, it's the driver side banks, driver side front injectors read out at 13.5. Uh, so there's the culprit. Now what can happen is one bad injector can cause the entire bank to go bad on the engine, which might be why it's bogging and rough idling and such. So. Uh, what that means is we're going to have to pull the plenum and we're going to do all the injectors because we got to go in there anyways. Uh, probably going to get Bosch three injectors for it. It looks like that's what everyone recommended online to do that. Now the problem is when I did all this and I put these ported parts on, I had a hard time getting it to seal up with the gaskets. You're not supposed to use RTV when you put this back together, but uh, I had many vacuum leaks. We put a Halloween fogger up to the intake and it blew smoke all out of the engine. So I took it all apart again, and I ended up having to re-tap some of the intake ho uh, runner holes for the bolts and some RTV. I got it to seal up perfect, and it's been fine ever since. But um, to do this, just the plenum, plenum has to come off. You take off the bolts here on the side of the runners, and uh, I'll probably have to loosen some of the lower ones. I'm not going to take them out. And then uh, pull the throttle body off, the plenum off, and then we can get to the fuel rail in there and pop that off and swap the injectors so I have to order those parts there but while we're here we're also going to test the fuel pump the Schrader valve for the fuel lines right here it's just like a tire stem you pop this you roll this off and then we'll connect the the fuel pressure gauge to it and I'll put the put the car into accessory we should hear the fuel pump prime and we'll be able to take a reading on the pressure in the rail uh, I should have 43.5 pounds of pressure in there we shouldn't see it drop, it should maintain that pressure. So this is my uh, fuel gauge here, pressure gauge. Uh, it has the connect end here that connects to the Schrader valve with the screws on. And when I prime it, we should see the needle go up to about 43.5 pounds there. The clear tube is for the release of the fuel. When you're all done, you put a catch can at the end of that, push the release valve, lets the pressure out, and it'll dump the fuel down the clear line. 
Just make sure you got some uh, gasoline safe container to uh, catch all that as you do it. So I'm not going to come over here to the fuel rail and we're going to remove that Schrader valve cap. So let's give this a shot. Let's see if I can do it one handed. Yep, it's coming right off. So we just loosen that off. Try not to drop it. And there's the valve. Now the tricky part is I'm getting this to connect in that little space, but it looks like it should be able to come straight in and hit it. Might be able to remove this vacuum line here as I connect it. Yeah, and we'll reconnect that before we prime the system. That's just gonna make it easier to connect the, the pressure gauge to it. So we're gonna do that now. And again, this will just screw on. All right, so I successfully attached the fuel pressure gauge here. You see it's screwed on. And I've hopefully positioned this in a place where we'll be able to see from inside the car when filming to see what it pressurizes to when I turn the key to accessory. And you see the purge line's going down to a Gatorade jar that I punched a hole in the top end just to catch a little bit of fuel that's gonna come out when I purge it. So, let's hop in the car and see what we get for a pressure reading. Okay, so we're inside the car now. And I noticed that when I turn the key to accessory, I hear the fuel pump click. I don't hear it run. The gauge pressurizing either. So I'm gonna turn it to accessory now. Maybe the microphone will pick up the clicking sound. It goes click click. It should be running. We should hear something like a little motor run as it primes the fuel rail. And if I try to start the car, there's nothing. There's no smell of fuel either, like it's flooding. So my guess is the fuel pump. I can hear it do that little click when we turn it on. So that's my suspect of what it's gonna be. So we're gonna do a fuel pump replacement on this Corvette. So there it is. Um, I'm gonna start with the fuel pump. I'm not gonna go right after those injectors. Uh, the car ran fine, even though that one injector does look like it's starting to fail. Uh, it's not a job I'm ready to do yet. That's maybe something we'll do in the winter months as that, uh, if that continues to get worse but uh the fuel pump looks pretty easy to do so we'll look for an upcoming video on replacing the fuel pump on your c4 uh corvette and i hope you like the video hope this helped you with testing your troubleshooting your engine if you got a starting problem please remember to like it and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time take care everyone